So family, as we tell you guys all the time, we appreciate you for checking out ATL Day Ones each and every day. You are so a part of our ATL Day Ones family, but we never want you to stop just here. There are amazing, amazing pieces of content all across this Locked On Network, including Locked On Sports Today. So make sure after you check us out, check those guys out as well, because of course they are giving you the biggest stories of the day. I know here in Atlanta, you might be triggered every time you hear about the Hawks blowing a halftime lead and losing a game. Those guys might actually talk about it and react to it from a national perspective, especially on how it teeter tots them as it relates to that Eastern Conference and how close that race is and how tight it's going to be throughout the season. Or you may want to hear from their perspective, what Jarvis and I are going to talk about today, which is who do they have faith in as it relates to the Falcons and also anything that you want to hear about across the landscape of sports that gives a little bit more of a flavor like for the culture they got it for you too and it is called take of the day so again after you check us out check out locked on sports today you get us on the odyssey app that's where you can find them as well you can find them on youtube and of course wherever you download your podcast so like we told you guys in our intro like i told you a few seconds ago we're going to talk now about the concept of faith first of all Continue to have faith in the Falcons because they are still right in the thick of things. Nobody seems to want to win the NFC South. So therefore, the Falcons are still right in the thick of it. So have faith. But my first question to you is this. We're going to start at the top and kind of work our way down. Jarvis, at the top of the pyramid is one Arthur Smith. So there are still trending topics about Arthur Smith's decision to throw the ball in the tight red zone that unfortunately was picked off. And that led to the commander's win over the Falcons Sunday. My question to you is this. Do you still have faith in Arthur Smith's play calling? I do, um, because I think that he came up with a a, a great game plan because I remember, you know, Mark Zeno and John Chuckery going off on ATL Hangouts about how this vaunted defensive line, which is I understood because those they have a lot yeah. of talent up front. <laughs> and, <got> guys. <laughs> and and, and the, the Falcons, I mean, Arthur Smith schemed up a game plan to be able mm-hmm. to run the ball successfully, which I said he would be able to do because I yeah. do have faith in his play calling overall, right? Yeah. But yeah. I, I think one of the things that I do have to question, mm-hmm. not not necessarily to play on second down because we talked right. about that yesterday, right? Because that was that was something that we had a, an in-depth discussion about. But mm-hmm. I think the play before, that was the one that kind of – bothers me a little bit right yeah. you run the the, the the rpo quarterback keep type situation you're mm-hmm. essentially you find yourself running away from the goal line and and i just don't like that because there were some things i went back and watched in the film this morning and i was just mm-hmm. like okay what did they run that they had success with that i thought was very interesting that they could have run in that particular situation not sitting mm-hmm. up here saying i'm a play caller but I think that if you see something that works early on in the game and you don't necessarily run it that much throughout the game, Mm -hmm. when the situation comes down where you need some yards, go with what works. And I think that that first series, uh, they were running like what I call a little triangle, uh, a Mm -hmm. triangle formation, right? So you had three, what looked like three running backs in the Mm -hmm. backfield, but it was actually Parker Hesse and Michael Michael Pruitt. And then you had um, Cordell Paris. All of them were kind of lined up. Like uh, right, 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 right um, beside each other, right, and mm-hmm. then you could have gone with that play and have some a dive situation type going on, or a counter situation. But that RPO, it can so much can happen when in that particular situation. You saw mm-hmm. they, they, they were a uh, tackle for loss minus two because yeah. Washington had kind of they were kind of prepared for that, right? So yeah. I think that you throw something different and that they had worked early on in the game. Like play calls do that all the time, T. They do mm-hmm. it each they do it all the time like that yeah. first script that's in the in that's why they actually run those plays because they throw it mm-hmm. out there in the beginning that first drive yeah. to see okay maybe i'll come back to this one later on and i think he mm-hmm. should have put a pin in that that particular formation and yeah. brought it back at that time because you needed some yardage and you needed to at least throw them off somewhat mm-hmm. because they were ready for that play at the end of the day that's yes. that's what all it boiled down to they were ready for it and right. it, it, that's why you end up seeing what you, what the, the end result on it Yeah, and I agree. I still have faith in Arthur Smith's play calling overall. And I think about even from last year to this year, how we can point to multiple games where he made the right decision, where even a year ago, he probably wouldn't have. So I don't want to say I've lost faith on Arthur Smith because of one questionable call, because I'll be honest with you, I probably have to go back several games to a call that was a head scratcher for me. So yeah, I'm going to still keep my faith in his ability to understand 
the nuances of both sides of it, whether he sticks with, hey, I would have still called the pass play over and over again. And like you said, not just on that second down, but on the, the play just before it, or whether he's saying to himself, yeah, maybe next time I'll do the run. But whatever the case, I suspect that he went back into the lab right after that game on Sunday to see, okay, how could I have maybe made some different decisions that could have put us in a position to actually win? Because, I mean, let's be honest, Jarvis, the play calling that got you in the tight red zone with a minute left in the game, you still have to give credit to Arthur Smith for that. Now, on the defensive side of the ball, well, I will say mm -hmm. I most certainly still have all the faith in the world in AJ Terrell. <laughs> and I like how you put that. Sure do. Very specific on that one. <laughs> yes. AJ Terrell. Right. So I'm going to let him be the poster child for my faith in the secondary. However, there might be another group, like that group that defends the run. I'm a little bit concerned. I'm not sure. I think my faith is kind of getting a little shaky on that group. I'm, I'm with you because when you think about the guy that we we deemed on this show as a, a run stopper, right? Take yeah. one Graham. He's down yeah. for the next four weeks, and I think that he's gonna we're gonna find out that he's gonna be down for the rest of the season. Yeah, and would we'll not be shocked at, by that at all. Uh, but yeah. I think that when you lose a guy like that, it's hard to pull somebody off the bench and say, "Hey, make this your best asset." Stop the run. Yeah, it's, it's, it's hard to do that. And then yeah. when you have a guy like Grady Jerry, who now is probably eating up, he is eating up some double teams and, and yes. teams are yes. focusing in more on him. And you saw that that happened you know, mm -hmm. against Washington because yep. it was just outside of 97 from every now and then you didn't see any defensive lineman in the backfield. No. <laughs> show me, show me, because I didn't see it. I did not yeah. see any defensive lineman playing around the backfield. All I saw was guys being covered up, and all you saw was guys reaching, trying to see, hey, let me get, try to get this tackle. And as, I'm, as I'm being blocked, and right. I'm being running to – I'm getting blocked into the linebacker, and then they're getting up to the next level with Richard Grant. And, you know, sometimes he'd be a little yeah. shaking when he op in the open field as well. So all that stuff, like, it starts up front. And I just don't trust this front right now because just from an edge setter standpoint, Audio Kandeshi and how he did not have one of the, the uh, one of his best games. And I'm being really nice really when nice I say it like that. that. I'm being very nice when yeah. I say it like that. But so all those things kind of come into play now, right now, because you're going against a Pittsburgh Steelers team. Like you had Najee Harris, who went out with an injury last night on Monday Night Football. But, you yeah. know, he may or may not be back. But I think his backup is Snell. He's yeah. just as capable. I'm yeah. not saying They're he's better than Najee. Right but is the truth. Yes, truth. yes. Yeah. They they have some guys who can tote that rock, and I think yeah. that the Pittsburgh offensive line is intact, and they are the guys that are going to be opening up those holes for those guys. So I think that I don't have I don't have faith in, in that, def, that that defensive line because that's where it actually starts, and mm -hmm. and I think that Dean Pease once again yeah. is going to have to get really creative. When I'm talking about run blitzes and getting in linebackers involved, but you open mm -hmm. up yourself up for a lot of other stuff when you do that. Yeah. So it's going to be a fine line. Pease is going to have to walk for this game plan on Sunday. Yeah, you think about the fact that you're looking at identical results on some level with the commanders having collectively gotten 172 yards on the ground. Steelers did that last night to the Colts. Yeah. And one more piece to that is – Kenny Pickett is a bit more mobile than Taylor Heineke. So he gives a little bit. A little, yeah. yeah. So he gives a little bit more of a compliment to their run game than maybe the Falcons saw on Sunday. So it'll be interesting to see. But yeah, our faith, we, we, we're back on the altar about that run. Wayne game. a little oh. bit. Yeah. Well, yeah. Have a little prayer. Exactly. Mm -hmm. We're sending them up. Now, <laughs> one more, and I almost feel like there's not enough time in the day, but I'm going to ask the question anyway, because we talked about the coach. And his play calling, we talked about faith in the defense. And sometimes I feel like with the faith on the offense, I, I think you and I still, for the most part, have faith. So I'm not going to ask that question about the offense. More so I'm going to say, going back to a little bit of play calling, sometimes I feel like there is blind faith that Arthur Smith has in Marcus Mariota, where maybe the mm. rest of us are just blind to it. Because mm. I still feel like there are some limitations there that to us are obvious with one. And yet... I don't know. Sometimes you feel like, oh, I doesn't quite see what we see in his faith in old number one. To be honest with you, like just 
I mean, just go real quick. I know we, you know, we little pressed for time, but let's just go back from the beginning of the season, right? We were talking about fumble snaps and you know, fumbling the ball and handing it off and being just, on the ground and throwing being through, on the ground somebody, and some throwing it out, throwing, like, like we literally talked about this about a guy. Let's just take the name out. Like I like to do that. Take the name out. Let's take yeah. Marcus Mario's name out. Mm -hmm. Fumble snaps, bad decision making. Um, not, not knowing when to throw, not football. taking sacks. We don't have to throwing away the football when you have to. Mental issues, breakdowns in certain mm -hmm. time when certain aspects of the game when the game is on the line. Like that doesn't sound like a seven year veteran. No, no reason. Like I stopped rookie. at my first read. Right, one stop, and one 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 read and throw. That that sounds like a rookie quarterback to me. Mm -hmm. So. Yeah, I'm with you. I don't get it. I don't understand it. And I think that as I've been talking and kind of thinking about it in the back of my mind, it's just like, I really, I wholeheartedly believe this, T. I've never said this on our show before. I know a lot of people say that, preface their comp statement, and then say something that somebody has said, but I think this is one, this one is real right here. I believe the only reason that Marcus Mariota is the starting quarterback for this team is because he's more mobile than Desmond Ritter. He understand Arthur Smith understands what he's dealing with when it's from an offensive line standpoint. Mm -hmm. And he knows that he needs a mobile quarterback in order to be able to avoid the rush when yeah. need be and you know the implement that RPO because that yes. opens up a lot of from a play calling standpoint and it mm -hmm. opens up in the run game and in the passing game. So that yeah. opens up a lot. That that's an extra weapon. That's mm -hmm. another player or personnel that you have to worry about yep. from a defensive play calling standpoint. So I think that. And from that standpoint right there, that mm -hmm. one little 0.5 seconds over 40 time that Marcus Mariota has over over uh, Desmond Ritter is the reason why he's still in there. And I think that yeah. Arthur Smith has that blind faith. That that could very well be the case. That There have been questions and pontifications about why Mariota and why not Ritter. And we believe that he has the intellectual capability. We believe the football IQ is there. We believe that yes, the indeed. arm strength is there. The accuracy Absolutely. is there. So what is it? Then you go to the intangibles, and that could very well be one intangible. He just, Mariota might just be a hair ahead of him in a space where it's needed because if somebody's running for their lives, at least you want to know it's the guy who can actually run for his life. But indeed. speaking of something you might want to run to, especially – if you had to sit through Sunday's game against the Commanders and you had to sit through Monday's game, Hawks, Sixers, that's a bill bar for you. Yes. And uh, you might need to keep them handy because there's still two more games this week for the Hawks. Just saying. But that <laughs> bill bar is a good look because at least if you're going to do something to drown your sorrow, do it with something like the cookie dough puff because with that, you got 100% real chocolate. You have only 160 grams of fat, and yet you have 15 grams of protein that are easy to digest, which means that your energy level is going to go up and go up quickly and in a healthy way. So go to build.com, check out, not just definitely want you to check out the cookie dough puffs, but they have a myriad of offerings that we want you to check out as well. And when you go, make sure if this is your first order that you put in the code locked on 15 because that'll get you 15% off on that first order. And as always, drop a comment in our comment section once you order and you get your stash and let us know if you like it the way that we like it. Again, that's built.com. Check out that website, plug in the code locked on 15 and go ahead and get you some energy or get you some comfort food for those days when these teens in Atlanta try your patience.